Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Jake Strand. And I'm Tracy McRae. According to the American Lung Association, lung function slowly declines after about age 30. Five, a recent international study found that women with regular exposure to cleaning products may have more rapid decline in lung function over time. Those most effective were women who worked as professional cleaners. Uh oh. More than 6,000 <laughs> participants were studied over two decades, and researchers found that women who use spray cleaning products at least once a week showed the fastest decline in lung function. Exposure to cleaning products wasn't linked to a decline in lung function for men, however, but the authors admit that this may be because there were so few professional male cleaners that were in the study. Here to discuss is the Division Chair of Preventative Medicine at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Clayton Cole. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Cole. It's good to have you here. Thanks. Nice to be here. So um, this isn't about I should not be cleaning my bathroom anymore. I need to find someone else to do it. Well, that'd be a good excuse, but... <laughs> Well, I think it's, uh, you know, the study is bigger than that. I mean, and basically what it is, is uh, this is a, a, an epidemiologic study looking at a large cohort of individuals that spend their days cleaning. And, and so, you know, just by exposure alone, this is a higher risk group in general. So it doesn't necessarily mean that women in general are more susceptible to men. I think uh, that's not what the study's saying. It's more that... Uh, women in this particular cohort that were exposed directly to these products were found to have decreases in lung function. So what do we mean when we say lung function? Well, what they what happened is is they they do um, breathing tests, uh, what we refer to as spirometry. And spirometry is where a technician will have you blow hard and fast into a tube and it measures how well during each part of the breath that you're able to exhale that air. And it's just one marker of how we sort of get a, a general sense of how you're doing in terms of your air flow out of the lung. Why, did, why does that decline the older you get? Well, I, you know, there's a variety of reasons, but as we age, uh, for example, our thoracic and abdominal excursion, we call it, the ability to take a deep breath is a little less, um, the, the, uh, at a, a cellular level at the alveolus, the little air sac where the oxygen and carbon dioxide is exchanged, um, doesn't quite function as well as when we're, say, in our 20s. And, and so uh, we know that after even as early as in your 30s or 40s, and in particular more in your 50s or 60s, um, that you lose a little bit of this airflow function each year. Now, there are other factors that can contribute to that. So those would be um, you know, certainly if you're a smoker, we know that the decline rate is more. And if you're exposed to known respiratory irritants like smoke and dust and chemical fumes, that it may be a little bit more. And this study just attests to that. Well, and, and so kind of on that last point, the chemical fumes, were you able to figure out which chemical cleaners were most dangerous? Well, I don't think it really pointed that out, but there are certain types that are commonly seen, especially in a household environment. And again, cleaners can be, you know, industrial cleaners can be using, you know, any types of thing. This could be from, you know, window cleaners to, um, you know, working in hotels and that type of thing where there's a lot of exposure. But for the average person cleaning around the house, the things that you have to be thinking about are things like um, phthalates, which are found in many fragranced uh, household products, which are known uh, to be disruptors of endocrine function. So there's been some studies looking at decreased sperm counts in men um, and uh, 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 disruption in menstrual cycles in women and, and for, for higher exposures. Um, things like um, where um, common like bleach and ammonia and things like that, that, that off gas that are highly water soluble. And I guess, what do we mean by water soluble? If you can, um, it, when it interacts with water, um, it, it is reacting quickly. So in other words, when you take a deep breath, uh, you know, when you smell ammonia, wow, mm -hmm. you know, you, mm -hmm. you know, right. you're in it. Um, and, and so mixing that with bleach, for example, creates a different compound which is uh, certain types of chlorinated compounds that cause a lot of damage to the airway in the lung. And so every once in a while we'll get referrals for um, someone cleaning at home and they have their head down in a tub. They've put bleach to kind of disinfect it and then throw some ammonia on there. And all of a sudden now they've got a hypochlorite gas that they're breathing in because it settles. Um, 
not good for the respiratory system. So most of the time, do the patients end up with like emphysema or what ends up happening to their lungs? Well, it's more on a cellular basis. So as opposed to you're not going to see necessarily instant change in terms of uh, on an x-ray or even on the pulmonary function testing in a short period of time. That's why you notice the study is over years where you see the difference. But again, the dose alone determines the poison. So if it's a small amount, but continually over a long period of time, it can have the same types of effect as a larger exposure over a shorter period of time. Do we do we think with these findings, there's a way to branch out and say, well, you know, if this happened with this group of individuals, are there other professions or jobs that need to be careful in, in their exposure when we think about lung function? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's not even so much about the occupational aspects, although certainly in any occupation, we always look at, you know, gee, are there uh, ways to substitute products? Are there engineering controls like better local exhaust ventilation or things like that, that we can do on a local type level to, you know, help decrease the concentration of an exposure and then ultimately is there uh, occupations where we can use personal respiratory protection uh, anything from a paper dust mask to something more that protects us from fumes uh, uh, which a paper du dust mask may not actually protect you from so I think on a again coning down to the average uh, uh, homemaker uh, that's cleaning at home I think we're all consumers, and I think picking products that are less toxic is important, particularly when you are cleaning over time on a daily basis. And this isn't in an industrial application. It's at home. <laughs> daily. That's funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure like my wife think, yeah. is laughing <laughs> as like we to speak. I like think that I clean daily. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other uh, household hazards that we should watch out for? Well, I mean, I think there's, um, you know, other things like f uh, certain uh, types of fabric softeners uh, that have what are called quaternary ammonium compounds or otherwise referred to as quats. Um, I, it, I thought we weren't supposed to use fabric softeners at all. Well, I mean, certain types are okay. And actually, there are some do-it-yourself type products that you can mix. There's some excellent materials out that you can, uh, a literature that you can uh, uh, kind of, uh, make your own concoctions at home made up of natural products. You know, things like vinegar or acetic acid is a great natural cleaner for a lot of different things. And I think used appropriately can get the job done without the toxic effects that we, that you can have from other products. In the end, it all comes back to Heloise. We should have just followed Heloise. is all about baking soda and vinegar. There you have it. <laughs> is there anything else that you want listeners to learn about what the study showed? Well, I think, you know, in general, when you think about toxic compounds, you know, one of the things at home, you know, especially families with small children, is that they can get into big trouble when they're curious. And I think locking those cabinets or putting it in areas that are non-accessible to them is a great preventive strategy to avoid the whole uh, discussion about toxicity at that level in terms of poisoning and then ultimately choosing products that are safer that are more environmentally friendly are is always a good idea and you know and making sure there's adequate ventilation on a local level you know making sure that you take time to turn on a fan open a window and and the, and the like well, we've been talking about the hazards of household cleaners with the division chair of preventative medicine at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Clayton Cole. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Cole. Great to be here. Thanks.